Are there short setups for tomorrow? Absolutely. I mean, look, look at look at the semiconductor names, right? I, I think that's the most important guy. Like, look at the semis. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. So I'm confused as hell, right? So there's something I say all the time and I, I, I try to remind, especially the newer traders, um, that getting rid of emotions usually take takes time, right? It'll, it'll definitely take years and years and time and time and all that good stuff. But the one thing I, I've always kind of maintained for years to kind of point somebody in, in the right direction is I, I don't have any, generally, I, I don't have any expectations going to the day. Because I believe if you have no expectations, that means there is no disappointment. And the most important part is slowly but surely, you'll start looking at the, every single individual day as true fair, fair value, right? Buyers, sellers, and all that good stuff uh, in between. But I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I'm not sure I could have been more bullish going into today's session uh, than from yesterday. So let's kind of review, right? Let's kind of do a little bit of a uh, of a little bit of review, okay? Uh, we had a massive two, two and a half week run, right? Massive. Followed by a three day orderly decline into the rising 10 day moving average. And that point, which was Monday, yesterday, we turn around and say, well, let the markets tell us what's going to happen next, right? We don't need to guess. And yesterday was a phenomenal move, right? Absolutely phenomenal move. Uh, we, if you watched last night's video, it was basically national no downtick name, right? No downtick day. Uh, everything went nuts. Uh, Tesla, Amazon, um, Facebook, it, it doesn't make a difference. Netflix, Netflix, Pets Dog, Schmetz Dog, right? Everything went nuts. Absolutely nuts. And the most important part was today we were watching for, uh, today we were watching for continuation, right? And there's something that people always say, well, if there's a gun to my head, I'd say we, we go higher. And it's always one of those jokes, ha ha ha, but there is no gun to my head. The point is, if there was a gun to my head yesterday, I'd be dead right now, okay? And I think speaking for a lot of uh, ch traders who trade technology, we'd be all dead. We'd be at guts on the floor. We are brain spilling out. We'd be absolutely dead. I don't think I could have seen a more aggressive and more technically bullish setup going into today. And after yesterday's uh, breakout of Tesla and Amazon and all that good stuff, I just had all beta on my watch list going into today. And I tell you, I'm still waiting for the continuation. Yep, still waiting for continuation. I'm completely dumbfounded. Um, it's very, very rare that I, I put myself in a position that I have no idea what's happening. And that's basically what it is right now. Like tomorrow, I have no idea what's gonna happen because today was the complete opposite or the mirror image, almost like Bizarro World. Remember Bizarro Superman? So if yesterday was national no downtick day, well, today was national no uptick day. And there was absolutely no reason, literally no reason for today's day. The day started out, the futures were pretty, you know, pretty flat down a little bit after yesterday's, you know, 250 point move on the NASDAQ. You kind of expect it, right? And we talked about it last night. I said, hey, anything, uh, anything that opens up, uh, opens up red, like, you know, like a, like a Tesla you know, on the rising 60 minute support going red to green, it should go, right? And that was the plan. Like it was literally at the plan on, on, on the Twitter feed. I put in square, was waiting for a square move, was waiting for a continuation on Amazon. Uh, Tesla, Tesla, we'll take, te talk about Tesla in a second, but everything, right? I was watching the video to the upside, right, <laughs> right to the upside. I was watching Microsoft to the upside, still watching, right, still watching. And, and this is one of those times that usually, and, and I say this all the time, it's not about being right, it's about, you know, being, you know, technically, you know, technically right, a monetary right. Who cares about being right? It's all about don't be wrong uh, monetarily. And, and I tell you, I, it, today is one of those sessions that I, I really have no answers of why the market gave up uh, so aggressively today. And the craziest part about it 
if you traded yesterday, and especially for all you guys who know, you know, who are long all these stocks, you kind of know that yesterday's session, it felt different, right? It felt so good. Like it was a staircase to heaven, aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And what we were able to accomplish, right? In the six hours of aggression, 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 the market, the cues gave up within the first 20, 25 minutes of trading. There was absolutely zero. There was zero aggression to the upside. There were no bounces. There was no defense. It's like yesterday never happened. And it's almost like somebody, you ever hear these, and I was kind of talking about today uh, in the webinar, you ever hear these, these people, uh, you know, they go to a bar, they get drunk, and they wake up to, to a total stranger, and they're like, oh my God, I made a mistake. That's almost what it felt like yesterday. It almost felt like traders were buying up all these stocks aggressively, 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 and they woke up overnight and said, what did I do? Right? And that's exactly what kind of happened. And the craziest part about it is, if you look at the majority of charts, kind of going into tonight's research into tomorrow, it's not that the market is a short, right? Like for example, I have all shorts on my watch for tomorrow, but I'm not really short biased because I'm just so damn confused. The only names that I can find that have any type of setup are just short setups. So usually when I'm 100% sell bias, well, that's I'm 100% sell bias. I just can't find any long setups, right? So does that make me 100% sell bias tomorrow? Look, nothing would absolutely shock me. You know, generally we have an idea all the time which way the wind is blowing. There's going to be days in throughout the year, there's going to be days uh, through your career that you absolutely don't have an answer of why things are happening or more or is equally as important, you don't have a clue what's gonna happen tomorrow. Would I be shocked if tomorrow, you know, after you know doing some research tonight and looking how some semis are weak and this one's weak, would it be shocking if, if we had a conversation tomorrow night in the video and say, well, I was I saw all short setups, but man, oh man, look at that rally we saw today, right? Beta woke up again. Nothing would shock me, right? Nothing would absolutely shock me. And and here's the cool part, and I and I say this all the time. We're human beings, right? It's our, It's not our job to be perfect. It's not our job to guess the closing prices. Our job is just to put in the research and let the market action, the other side of the equation, tell us that we're wrong, right? You don't need to. You didn't need to come in today and say, well, you know, we're bullish. Let's buy this on a dip and that on a dip and this on a dip. If you were buying dips all day. You've got dipped out into a, taking a big, big L. So. Absolutely crazy day. We heard some comments this morning. Uh, I think it was Boehner and one of these Fed schmucks uh, that just speak nonstop every day, all day. They're speaking now. I, I bet you if you turn around, he's behind you talking now. Way too much commentary by the Fed. Um, but the, the most important part was when Boehner started talking, you know, you had your, your first knee-jerk reaction. The Nasdaq went down. Everything went down. But it, was, it wasn't a big deal. And the next thing you know, it's like nothing happened yesterday. There was no aggression yesterday. Like yesterday didn't happen and we resumed kind of a downward cycle. But here's the part, right? Here's the part that what I, what I mean by I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I really don't because we really did. You know, we're still above this channel here, but we're below this channel here. So something has to give. Usually you don't have a situation in the middle of the range uh, after a big move up, after a retracement and after a resume. But that's kind of what we're looking for. And the oddest part about today's close was we didn't, it, it's not like we had an inside day, right? For all you guys who, who are watching who are brand new traders, an inside day is after a big, big move like we had yesterday, an inside day is we didn't take out the highs, we didn't take out the lows, but we didn't take out the highs and we did take out the lows, right? So it's, it's, it's very, very odd, you know, very odd. You know, we'll definitely be watching today's lows as a guide for tomorrow. But I'll be honest with you, I, I don't have a good grasp of, you know, pinpointing exactly what I want to do. Listen, are there short setups for tomorrow? Absolutely. I mean, look, look, at, look at the semiconductor names, right? I, I think that's the most important guide. Like, look at the semis. AMD never rallied, right? It held the bottom of the range here twice. AMD loses the bottom of the range. There's still, you know, five, six dollars in the trade. That looks fine. You know, look at GameStop, right? You know, GameStop, the GameStop had this big run up. They announced the split. They sold the split. They lost the 10 day moving average. If GameStop confirms the 10 day moving average, maybe it goes down to the 20. So, then again, these are, these are viable shorts, right? Viable short setups. 
You got Coinbase losing, you know, this rising channel here if it confirms has room to the downside. Uh, even Twitter that had this two big day run, right? Two big day run, Elon Musk, 9% shareholder. We're gonna have a, the edit button. It's all good in the world, right? It's a little tired. If it, if it gaps up tomorrow, gets stuff into supply and starts losing the bottom of today's range, of course, the, you know, there, there's an orderly back test uh, there as well. But it's very, very tough for me to turn around and, and, and find anything that looks good on the long side. Tesla could have been absolutely brilliant today. Brilliant after this big run, yesterday's breakout and everything. And the stock gave back every, literally just gave back everything. So, you know, we gotta watch Tesla tomorrow. Um, in a perfect world, what I'd like to see is Tesla uh, come to this rising 10 day moving average, trap some shorts and go back up. But man, oh man, after today's session, who the hell knows? All today did was literally stop out everybody on all their runners from yesterday, at Tesla, Amazon, potato, potato, and just really created a lot of uncertainty uh, going into tomorrow's session. And ironically, there's no, there were no pivots. There were literally no pivots that confirmed today. There was one thing in the morning that I said, hey, Tesla's about to go green. When Tesla was four, down four or five bucks, you knew it was gonna go green at least once ran up like six, seven bucks, and then everything imploded. But there was literally not one pivot uh, to the long side that confirmed today, as you could possibly imagine. And, you know, again, I wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. So I wasn't going to start shorting the market only 12 hours after this big ass, uh, you know, big, big, you know, big uh, uh, bull run. So I, very, very confusing day. But again, remember, confusing doesn't need to be negative. Confusing doesn't need to be dramatic financially or emotionally. Confusing just means, hey, you got to be a little bit more, a uh, little bit more constructive in your approach and waiting a little bit longer, trying to get a little bit more data uh, and putting yourself in a position that you might take an extra day or so, but let the, like, you know, let the air clear, right? Let everything clear, let the noise die down and you can see possibly where the market's gonna go. So again, going into tomorrow, I, I'm, again, I'm not really sell bias, but all I have is shorts on my, on my watch for tomorrow. And if we do uh, get some sort of trap in the morning and like Tesla wakes up and Amazon wakes and we start reclaiming and the good world is all good again, then obviously we'll adapt. But you, you have to be kind of open-minded for tomorrow. I, I'm telling you, anybody who, who tonight tells you they have a clear picture of what's gonna happen tomorrow, I would love to talk to them because I'm not that smart. Guys, have a great night. God bless everybody. And I will see you hopefully with some more answers by tomorrow night's video. Have a good night, guys. God bless.